Welcome to our web service on the first Sunday after lockdown three. Today we celebrate the baptism of Jesus. After consultations with the congregation and the DCC, we have, with a heavy heart, decided to close the Church of St Chad's during this very difficult time. This means now that we'll have no services on Sunday and the church will not be open for personal prayer on Wednesdays. These virtual services will continue as normal. Thank you. of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. We say together our prayer of preparation. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. We now come to a time of confession, so let's confess all those times that we have strayed. We say together, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, and confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 
we now say together our Gloria. Glory to God in the highest and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Our colleague for today, as we celebrate the baptism of Christ. Heavenly Father, at the Jordan, you reveal Jesus as your Son. May we recognize him as our Lord and know ourselves to be your beloved children through Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Amen. Our first reading is from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 42, and reading from verse 1. Here is my servant whom I uphold, my chosen in whom my soul delights. I have put my spirit upon him. He will bring forth justice to the nations. He will not cry or lift up his voice or make it heard in the street. A bruised reed he will not break and a dimly burning wick he will not quench. He will faithfully bring forth justice. He will not grow faint or be crushed until he has established justice in the earth and the coastlands wait for his teaching. Thus says God, the Lord, who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spread out the earth and what comes from it, who gives breath to the people upon it, and spirit to those who walk in it. I am the Lord. I have called you in righteousness. I have taken you by the hand and kept you. I have given you as a covenant to the people, a light to the nations, to open the eyes that are blind, to bring out the prisoners from the dungeon, from the prison, those who sit in darkness. I am the Lord, that is my name, my glory I give to no other, nor my praise to idols. See, the former things have come to pass, and new things I now declare. Before they spring forth, I tell you of them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord's my shepherd, I'll not want. He makes me lie in pastures green. He leads me by the still, still waters. His goodness restores my soul. And I will trust in you, and I will trust in you, for your endless mercy follows me, your goodness will my ways in righteousness and he anoints my head with oil and my cup it overflows with joy I feast on his blood I will try. 
Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. John the Baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the River Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice from the heaven said, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Last week we celebrated Epiphany Sunday. And this week we move into the baptism of Jesus. And what is abundantly clear, if you read the other Gospels accounts, uh, not Mark, is that John the Baptist was a little surprised when Jesus came to him, when Jesus came to John for baptism. Before John came to him, we see John in a very different role. His role up to this point had been like a concert uh, or a boxing promoter. He's stirring up the audience, the crowds if you like, into excitement about the one who is about to appear. He's coming. He's more powerful than me. John says. He will give you God's wind. 
and God's fire, not just water. He'll sort you out. He'll clear out the mess. He'll clean up God's farm so only the good wheat is left. He's going to change everything. He's going to transform it all. Instead, what we get is Jesus. The Jesus we have only met so far as a baby and very briefly as a precocious 12-year-old in the temple. Jesus, who stands humbly before John and asks to be baptised. Jesus, who identifies himself not with a God who sweeps everything before him, but who identifies himself with people who are not only facing judgment, but people also facing the need to repent. Other gospel accounts say that John is horrified. Why would Jesus be coming to be baptised? What on earth has happened to the agenda? What's happened to our expectations? What's happened to the wind and fire? What's happened to the clearing out of God's barn? Surely, if anything, John needs to be baptised by Jesus, not the other way around. Jesus' actions tell us something fundamental about the whole gospel story. The gospel story that is going to unfold before us, to our amazement, and in most cases to our disbelief. Yes, Jesus is coming to fulfill God's plans, to fulfill God's promises, which God declared long ago. Yes, these are promises that will blow God's spirit through the world. But if Jesus is going to do this, then this is how he must do it. He must humble himself, identifying himself with you and with me, by taking our place, by sharing our sorrows, by living our lives, and ultimately by dying our death. Part of the challenge for us today is to learn never to be surprised by Jesus. Jesus comes to fulfill God's plans, not ours. And what we have to understand is this. This is not our agenda. This is not our project. This is not our plan. But if we learn to listen carefully, to what Jesus says, if we learn to watch carefully what he does, we may find that our real longings are richly met. We cannot earn God. We cannot prove ourselves worthy of God. Perceiving God's presence is a matter of awareness, is a matter of enjoying the moment, of enjoying the now, of, deep, of deepening one's own commitment to be present, to be present here and to be present now. There are moments when it happens and life seems to make sense. If I can see the mystery here and trust the mystery even in this piece of clay that I am, then I can also see and trust the mystery in you. If I'm able to see the divine image in myself and in you, eventually I will be able to see the divine image in all things. Jesus pushes seeing to the social edge. Can you, can you see the image of Christ in the least and the last of your brothers and sisters? Jesus uses this as his only description of the final judgment in Matthew 25. Nothing about commandments, nothing about church attendance, simply a matter of our ability to see. 
Can we see Christ in the nobodies who can't play our game of success? Can we see Christ in those who cannot reward us in return? When we can see the image of God, where we are not accustomed to seeing the image of God, then we see with eyes that are not our own. Finally, Jesus says that we have to love and recognize the divine image even in our enemies. Jesus teaches what many thought a leader would never teach or never ask of their followers. Love your enemies. Logically, this seems to make no sense at all. But either we see the divine image in all created things, or we don't see the divine image in anything. Once we can see this, the circle will keep moving outwards and widening its embrace until there will come a time when we see all created things in the image of God. The ability to love the outsider is probably the real test of true seeing. And it doesn't stop with human beings and enemies and the least and last of the brothers and sisters. It encompasses all life. Everything becomes enchanting with true sight. One God, one world, one truth, one suffering, one love. And all we can do, all we can do is participate. I pray that we can enter this new year, even with all its problems, with this awareness and this intention to join in with all our heart, with all our mind, and with all our body. Amen. Let us declare our faith in God in the words of the Creed. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray to God our Father for ourselves and for others. Blessed are you, Lord God. You have created the heavens and the earth. Blessed are you, Jesus Christ. You came among us and were baptized of John. Blessed are you, holy life-giving spirit. You descended as the dove and you fill us with life. Blessed are you, holy three. In you we live and move and have our being. Amen. Holy God, holy and strong one, Holy and Mighty One, we give you thanks for all who are baptised. We praise you for your own baptism and pray that we may know that we are always immersed in your presence. Give your church the power to show that we are members of Christ, children of God and inheritors of the Kingdom of Heaven. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, as your children, we pray to you for the situation we are once again in with another lockdown. To help us prevent the spread of COVID-19 and the new strain which is ravaging our land. We pray for all who minister to the sick and dying in our hospitals care homes and hospices. And we pray that the rate of infection will greatly reduce 
as we seek to stay safe for ourselves and others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we pray also for the distribution of the vaccines available to us to give protection against the coronavirus. May there be no obstacles in people receiving the vaccine in due course. And we pray that the government will be wisely advised regarding the timing of the second dose. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all who are suffering as a result of the coronavirus, in body, mind and spirit. For all who are isolated and lonely. And we remember the sick within our own congregation, particularly Beryl and Roger, Catherine and Derek, Audrey, Barbara and Edwin Bott, Jim, Jack, Leslie Fox, Melanie Lees, Dave Atkinson and Anne Thurgood and all of those known to us in a moment of silence. May they all know the strength and presence of the Holy Spirit in the love of God and the peace of his healing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We lift to you, Lord, all those whose journey in this life has ended, and for their families who mourn their passing. We pray especially at this time for Kath Solis, who sadly passed away on Monday, and for Terry Huxley, whose funeral was last Thursday. Be with all who grieve, and may they know your comfort in their lives, upholding them at this sad time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, as we walk through the storm that is COVID-19, may we hold our heads up high as we look to you to dispel the fear of the darkness and give us your light. We wait in anticipation for the golden sky at the end of the storm and the return of the sounds of singing and laughter. Help us to walk on with hope in our hearts, knowing that we never walk alone when we walk with you. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of our Son, Jesus Christ, sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Amen. We now share our peace. Unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and his name shall be called the Prince of Peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you, and also with you.
As this bread was scattered and then gathered and made one, so may your church be gathered into your kingdom. Glory to you, O God, forever. Wisdom has built her a house. She has mixed her wine. She has set her table. Glory to you, O God, forever. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give you thanks and praise. It is right to praise you, Father, Lord of all creation. In your love you made us for yourself. When, you, when we turned away, you did not reject us, but came to meet us in your Son. You embraced us as your children and welcomed us to sit and eat with you. In Christ you shared our life, that we might live in him and he in us. He opened his arms of love upon the cross and made for all the perfect sacrifice for sin. On the night that he was betrayed at supper with his friends, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His body is the bread of life. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His blood is shed for all. As we proclaim his death and celebrate his rising in glory, send your Holy Spirit that this bread and this wine may be to us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy gifts, make us one in Christ our risen Lord. With your whole church throughout the world, we offer you this sacrifice of praise and we lift our voice to join the eternal song of heaven, saying together, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We say together, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ given for you. Amen.
and the blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. together our prayer after communion. Eternal God, for whom we wait, you have fed us with the bread of eternal life. Keep us ever watchful that we may be ready to stand before the Son of Man, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We now sing together our final hymn. Turns me 
peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ, amen.